Okay, we've been looking at limits. There are two other big ideas in calculus, namely derivatives and integrals. Um, but then if you notice, question one is a limit problem. So let's take a look at a limit problem with an equation that doesn't have any strange behavior. If you notice, there's no holes or asymptotes in this graph. So the limits here are relatively easy to do. You, tra you can do the same thing. You can trace it from both the right side and the left side and you can see that they both match up and then you find the y value of that so the limit here would be equal to 70 that's where the y value of where the two sides match up question two says what would the unit be used for this limit measurement well if you don't notice that's the same as the y value here so that would be square inches okay the next question asks what would the area of the square in this uh, unit be So let's take a look at this picture here, and if we notice here, um, it looks like it's going across by ones, because if I put in enough tick marks there, it seems to be going across by ones. Going up, it looks like a pretty good approximation here is tens. It looks like it's going up by tens. So that means the area of this one square is 10 by 1, which gives me 10. Units-wise, this was square inches on the y-axis times inches on the x-axis, which comes out to cubic inches. So that means the area of one of the jet one square is equal to 10 cubic inches. And that's the answer to question 3. So the units kind of give me a hint of how to find the, uh, the definite integral. Reminder that the definite integral measures the area under the curve. So if I were to count all the squares that fills in that blue area, the area would give me some number in terms of cubic inches, which is almost always associated with volume. So we must be measuring the volume of whatever this object or situation is talking about. Okay, the last two questions deal with uh, the last big idea, which is a derivative. A derivative, there are two definitions of a derivative. Um, hopefully later on you'll figure out why they um, sound different, but in reality are the same. The first definition is instantaneous speed. The idea of taking a picture of a moving object and determining how fast it's moving by looking at only the picture. If you can imagine for a second there, that's a pretty tough concept to do because if you uh, uh, take a picture, a still photo, it's not moving. How am I going to calculate how fast the object is moving? Well, that's what calculus is all about. That's what we're going to do is find instantaneous speed. The other definition of a derivative is what we call the slope of a tangent line, which I will show an example of that here in just a second. But basically, a tangent line is a line that uh, intersects a curve all at one spot only, and it uh, closely models the behavior of the curve near it anyways, okay? So if I use that definition for this point and I find the derivative at x equals 5, I go to x equals 5 and I'm going to draw a tangent line. The tangent line has to intersect at that one point and it also has to follow the behavior of the curve. So you notice there's a line that intersects at this point and this point only and for points close to that it's basically parallel. It's not really parallel because we're talking about lines and curves the idea is it, go, it goes in the same direction as the curve does near that point. Okay? So, um, the derivative in this case would measure the slope of the tangent line. Then question six, would this answer be positive or negative? Well, if you notice, the line is going down, so the derivative would have to be negative. So as you can see, these three, this one problem kind of gives you a preview of each of the three big ideas of calculus, limits, derivatives, and integrals. Okay, <clears throat> to review now, um, from the previous problem, we looked at the three big, big ideas, limit, derivative, and integral. And so the limit, remember, it's the y value that you approach for any uh, given x value. So in the previous problem, if we um, draw our arrows and we see what y value 
that we get closer and closer to that would represent our limit. Okay, so the derivative now has two different definitions as I talked about in the previous problem. The first one is instantaneous speed which is the idea of taking a picture of a moving object and calculating its speed by just looking at that picture. If you stop for a second that's a pretty tough um, concept to be able to understand is to be able to look at a still photo and still calculate what the speed of that moving object was. The second definition is the slope of a tangent line and that's the pro um, definition I used in the previous problem and later on we'll try to discover why these two seemingly inst um, different definitions actually do mean the same thing. Okay, and the last idea now is an integral and the integral will always be the area under a curve. And in particular, this is what we call a definite integral, which um, we'll learn later on what an indefinite integral is. But for right now, that's an area under the curve. I do want to point out for the geometric one, the instantaneous speed is what we call the physical meaning. And the slope of the tangent line is what is known as the geometric meaning. Okay, continue to add these notes uh, to your Cornell notes, and thank you.